Good morning. Thank you all for being here with us today. We're very glad to have everyone, everyone here today. We have a very important duty today, but also a very exciting duty today. We're here to talk to you about the Healthcare Associated Infections 2016 Annual Report. This is the sixth year that this uh, report has been uh, put out. Um, you may remember or may not, but in 2009, uh, the Mike Denton Reporting Act uh, was put into place by the Alabama legislature. And this uh, is an act that um, asks Alabama hospitals to begin collecting data on uh, hospital-associated infections. Um, this uh, was actually uh, put into place um, after Senator Denton, Senator Bobby Denton, who was in the Shoals area, had a, a member of his family die from a health care-associated infection. And so this was seen as a really important way for us to learn more about how our uh, patients are taken care of in Alabama and to uh, provide information for all health care providers and hospitals to, to do a better job. We have some uh, really good news to report today about these uh, rates, and, and we'll want to go through these with you just sort of uh, one at a time. Um, we have a lot of somewhat uh, boring numbers, and I won't try to read all of them to you. But as soon as we're finished with our press conference today, all this information will be published online on our website, and you'll be able to go through that uh, and spend as much time as you need to sort of drill down through that. Um, th again, this law was uh, published, was uh, first passed in 2009. The rules about collecting health care associated infections uh, were put forth in 2010, and then 2011 was the first year that we began collecting this data. We collect data on four types of infections uh, that uh, have a particular interest to us in uh, public health and in uh, the hospital world. We collect information on catheter-associated urinary tract infections. We collect information on central line-associated bloodstream infections. And then we collect data on two types of surgical site infections uh, related to uh, colon surgeries and related to abdominal hysterectomies. Um, infections are uh, an issue for uh, all patients uh, who are in the healthcare setting, and we want to be sure that we're doing the very best job that we can do to, to take care of people who, uh, who come for help. What we do with this data is that we collect it and we uh, provide it in an annual report, as you're going to see today, and then we provide feedback to all individual hospitals so that they can uh, look and see uh, sort of how they're doing. It, it's not so much a way to compare themselves hospital to hospital as it is a way for them to see how they do within their own hospital and to compare themselves against themselves and, and to look for ways that uh, they can uh, develop strategies to improve things or to do things differently or to do things better. And so it's been a great partnership that the health department has had with the hospital association and with our individual member hospitals uh, in developing in this plan which has done so much good uh, for our state. I want to uh, just walk through you sort of briefly the, uh, the four types of infections that I mentioned. And again, I'm happy to uh, provide information about numbers if you like, um, but, but all this will be available online as soon as we're finished. We actually have 92 hospitals in Alabama that reported uh, data related to catheter-associated urinary tract infections. Um, you'll hear us refer sometimes to what's called a, a SIR, or Standardized Infection Ratio, or SIR. And this is sort of the metric that we use to, to sort of get, get an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. You know, all hospitals aren't alike in terms of how many patients they have or, or what types of patients they have. And so we use this, this SIR, or SIR, to try to uh, get a numerical number that we can use to make some sense of this data. Um, for uh, 2016, our Urinary tract infection data showed a standard infection ratio, standardized infection ratio that showed fewer predictions than predicted based on national performance measures. So we're very excited to see that. Um, there were actually uh, one facility performed somewhat worse than the, than the national performance measure, but actually 26 facilities performed better, and the others were, were at least at that measure. So, so virtually all the hospitals uh, were at or above that measure, and we're very proud of that. Related to central line associated bloodstream infections, um, we see that um, 12 hospitals perform better than the national baseline. No hospital performed worse than the national baseline, and all the others were at the national baseline. So again, that was very good news for us to see. We have 66 Alabama hospitals that reported data based on colon surgery, uh, surgical site infections. Um, Alabama hospitals, again, performed better than the national uh, baseline there. There was one facility that performed worse, but seven had significantly fewer uh, infections and all the rest performed at, uh, at the national baseline. And then finally, we had 59 hospitals reporting abdominal hysterectomy surgery data. Um, Alabama hospitals, again, performed better than the national baseline. There were no facilities that performed worse than the national baseline. And so these numbers were uh, very exciting for us to see. 
We feel um, overall that our hospitals do a very good job. We're very proud of them. We're proud of all the work that they've put in uh, on this project uh, in particular, but also at the work that they put in and just taking care of patients and providing good care for people in our state. We have an excellent system of hospitals and medical care in Alabama, and we're very, very proud of that and very proud to be associated with that. Um, I do want to uh, point out to all of you that if you have questions, we have a number of uh, members here from our Healthcare Data Advisory Council who are in attendance. We have our state epidemiologists. We have um, other folks representing um, infection preventivists or hospitals or hospital executives. And so there are several other people here that can be sort of specialty uh, resources if we uh, have particular questions that you'd like to direct to them, and we'll get to that in just a minute. But at this time, I'm going to turn the uh, podium over to Mr. Keith Granger. He's a regional president and market CEO for Community Health Systems, who's here representing the Alabama Hospital Association, and he served as chairman of, of Alaha's Quality Task Force, and he's got a few uh, comments for us at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's certainly a pleasure for us to be here and share the good news with you today about infections in Alabama, and particularly, I guess, if we rephrase that, the lack of many infections that otherwise might exist in our state. It's been a very collaborative project, and uh, I am very proud of the work that the Alabama Department of Public Health, our state legislature, all of our hospitals, and the many professionals in our organizations that contribute every day to improving the health of the people we have the privilege of serving. Alabama is very fortunate. You might ask yourself this question, how can we possibly be getting all the very favorable scores that we're getting compared to other states? And I can tell you it's because of the hard work and the planning that's been put in place over the last eight to ten years. I'm going to go back in time here just a little bit with you because I think it's important to understand the emphasis and what is actually being done. Uh, we learned that the legislature was very interested about infection reductions and infection prevention primarily as a result of Senator Bobby Denton's uh, experience. Uh, we sat down at the table with him almost 10 years ago and said, you know, this is an ideal opportunity for us as a state to come together, the Department of Public Health, hospitals, the legislature, and create a framework that will actually contribute to the improvement of our prevention activities and infection as well as create accountability for the reporting process. We were very deliberate. We came back with a piece of legislation. Senator Denton sponsored that legislation, again, with the support of public health. And that legislation was specifically designed to report on what we thought were going to be the prevalent areas of interest coming in the future years for infection, and we got it right. We actually got on the topics that was the national priorities that came out a few years later. In addition, we created a framework for the data to be reviewed. Uh, all the key stakeholders in the state, state had a place at the table. That's the task force that you heard of the data council that we just referenced a few minutes ago. That group is meeting continuously since the bill has passed. And they review the data, they make suggestions, they create ideas, and we've created accountability and we've created audit processes to make sure that the data is real. Probably the most exciting thing to me that we did with the bill, though, is we created an environment that allowed hospitals to share information with each other, not so much their data, but to share the practices that they had found to be successful. And with the support of the Department of Public Health and the other expertise that could be brought to the table, what we've done is we've accelerated our movement in the state of Alabama because we're all working together and we're learning from each other and we're improving the skill sets of these professionals in our, in our programs. The infection preventionist and our facilities are critical. Our physician relationships are critical. Our work with all the accrediting and monitoring agencies is critical. So it's been one of those storybook endings, if you will, although it's not ending, it's continuing. It's about elevating the performance of all of us and really trying to make sure that we reduce infection so that the citizens of Alabama, uh, the chances their loved one or one of their family members is going to have an infection has been diminished. Even if you get an infection, one of the other things that we've been focused on is early intervention and recognition of that. So I'd like to applaud all the hospitals and the Department of Public Health and all of our professionals and our organizations. It takes the entire team to make that process work. We're blessed in Alabama that we got ahead of the curve. We're in many ways leading the nation in some of the numbers that we have by what you've heard today. And certainly we use those benchmarks. But I want to caution you about using sometimes 
inter single data, data points for measurement. We look at it as a collective process. We look at it as a collective opportunity to improve our performance. So whether it's a hospital performing great or it's a hospital performing a little less great, the opportunity for all of us to improve and protect our citizens is, is our challenge and is our goal, and the work will continue. And again, I want to thank the Department of Public Health for allowing us to have the opportunity to work so closely on this project. And we're very proud as a hospital industry in Alabama that we're able to step forward and have such positive results. So thank you all very much, and uh, it's a pleasure to be with you and report these good news uh, data points today. Thank you, Dr. Harry. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Granger. Um, thanks very much. That's all of the prepared remarks that we have uh, today. Uh, again, we have a lot of people here who may be able to answer particular questions if you have any, so we'll open the floor to questions at this time. Yes, what are some of the things hospitals have done to get these infection rates down? Yeah. So, the, so the question is, what have hospitals been doing to get infection uh, infection rates down? Um, Beth, could I ask you to address that? This is Beth Goodall, who's an infection prevention manager at Druid City Hospital uh, and a member of our council, and she can address that for you. Hello. Um, I would say one of the things that, w that we've done through the years is we've made sure that um, even though it's a competition, that we make it no, not so much about the rates and the numbers anymore. You'll see in the annual report there's a lot, lot of rates and comparisons, but really focusing and changing the culture within the hospitals to make it about the person and that just targeting zero is a real thing. You know, at DCH we have a, um, a particular unit that has gone se seven years now without uh, a, a central line associated bloodstream infection. So knowing that that is achievable, let's and sharing that information with you know with the people who are taking care of our patients and knowing that that's something that they that, that can be achieved, um, and and making it more about uh, the person and not just about numbers. Some of the things that we uh, that we've done at our hospital and I know other hospital is, hospitals have done have been, uh, for example. Uh, with the clapsies and caudies, avoiding those devices and, and not using those unless they're absolutely medically necessary. Um, our nurses are now, it's part of their process to every day look at those devices and go, okay, does this patient, you know, communicate with the whole healthcare team to say, is this device still absolutely necessary? Because, I mean, they're great if you need them and they save lives, but when they're no longer necessary, it's important to remove those potential source of, sources of infection. Questions. Anything else from anyone? Okay, great. Well, short and sweet is okay with us. Um, we're, uh, we'll be, uh, certainly be here for a few more minutes if you have any questions. We thank you very much for being here today. Again, this is a, a very important day for us in releasing this data, but also a very exciting day. We're very proud of the hospitals in Alabama and the job they're doing in controlling infections. Thank you so much for being here.